as Malcolm X said, by any means necessary. At this point, I question the whole purpose of the Black Panther Party. In my thinking, uh, they were necessary. It was a shock treatment for white America to see black men running around with guns, just like black men and saw white men running around with guns. Yeah, that was a shock treatment. It was good in that extent, but it got a lot of black people hurt. My recruitment by the FBI was very efficient, very simple, really. Um, I'd stolen a car and uh, went joyriding over the state limit, and um, they had a potential case against me, and I was looking for an opportunity to uh, work it off. And um, a couple of months later, that opportunity came when uh, uh, FBI agent Roy Mitchell asked me to uh, go down to the local office of the Black Panther Party and try to uh, gain membership. We tried to develop negative information to discredit him, just like we did uh, everybody else. We, meaning the FBI, I tried to come up with uh, signs of him doing drugs or, or something, and uh, never could. He was clean. He was dedicated. I've had private conversations with him. Uh, we got along pretty well. Two weeks later, a gun battle on Chicago's south side further escalated tensions. A former Panther and two policemen were killed. The deaths provoked a response from informant William O'Neill's FBI contact. Mitchell um, became more specific during that time. Um, he wanted to know the locations of weapons caches. He wanted to know if we had explosives. Um, he needed um, he needed to know who was staying at what locations, um, who spent the night where. Um, um, his information didn't change so much as he requested more detail. And uh, I knew why. Um, um, the, the, the shootout on the south side had pretty much laid the foundation within the party within the Black Panthers, we knew that the police would react some type of way. Expecting police action, the Black Panthers had fortified their office. FBI informant O'Neill was now head of Panther security in Chicago. And I remember uh, walking out of the office and, uh, and looking through a little clearing over on the, ne the next block, which was right in front of uh, the Monroe Street address and seeing a lot of police cars over there and um, at that time Bobby Rush came to the office uh, he had just come from over there or maybe the coroner's office in any case we walked back over there and uh, we both were speechless we just walked through the house and and saw where what had taken place and where he died and it was it was shocking and then I was you know I just began to realize that the information that I supplied leading up to that moment had facilitated that raid. I knew that indirectly uh, I had contributed and I felt it and I felt bad about it. And then I got mad. You know, I had, uh, and then I had to conceal those feelings, which made it worse. I couldn't. I couldn't say anything. I just had to continue to play the role. FBI headquarters authorized payment of a $300 bonus to informant William O'Neill for, quote, uniquely valuable services which he rendered over the past several months, unquote. 